you never know if these are scented. It always takes so long. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing really well out there. Thank you very much for clicking on this video. Can't wait to get stuck into today's episode. Episode number 20 of what sold this week. I've got 10 of my best sold sales items that I'm gonna bring you right away. And I'm also gonna show you my weekly sales numbers as well. I'm an online reseller guys. I sell full time online. If you're clicking on this video for the very first time, this is what I do. I buy items from a thrift store and then I sell them online for a profit on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. If you wanna do that, if you are doing that, if you do this full time, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because I'm gonna put out three videos every single week talking all things online reselling and hopefully you get some value out of it. So let's jump into it. I don't wanna muck around today because we've got quite a few items to get through and I'm gonna show you those numbers at the end of the episode. So we'll kick things off with my biggest ever sale. My biggest ever. I've never done one this big. A huge profit, double the profit that I've ever had before on a single item. So it's a good one to start the episode. Let's get into it. This one was an absolute beauty. I picked up off Facebook Marketplace this buffet table for $50. It was an old uni student apartment. They were getting rid of all their existing furniture to refurbish and let some new uni students come in for the new year. And that's where I stepped in. I came in and I took two of their items, including this one for $100. So $50 each. And it wasn't until I got home and I did my research that I realized that this buffet table is a Silverwood Amart furniture piece currently in stock for $1,300. So it wasn't a discontinued item, it can be purchased right now, and I was wrapped to get my hands on it for just 50 bucks. So it was in very good condition, I'd almost say a nine, nine and a half out of 10 uh, for condition, and I gave it a really good clean, a really good polish, I staged it, uh, I think really well, personally, and I was able to go ahead and get this one done in just three and a half hours. So a really fast sale, and I listed it for $650 and that's what it sold for, $650. So I've made $600, my biggest ever profit. Previously, it was about 280 for a single item. So to get this up to 600 for a single item, it has broken all the records. Just an awesome, awesome result. Um, but I was really curious as to what to actually list this thing for. I didn't have any comps to go off. There were no eBay previously sold comps that I could work off. I knew that it was worth 1,800 retail, but I didn't know how to sort of where to test the market. Where do you go where it becomes too high of a price and where do you go that you're actually underselling yourself? And I ended up coming up with 650 uh, because it was right in the middle. It was half price. So I advertised in the sense that it was retailing for 1,300. You're getting it for half price. I'm offering free delivery. Um, and it was in great condition. So really in the end, there was no wonder that this thing sold because the person that bought it got a great deal. It was just the fact that I was able to buy it for $50 that resulted in a really great sale for me as well. So to pocket 600 on this one, it's helped my week, it's helped my month, um, just to, it, it just goes to show guys that furniture can be a really high profitable, fast selling type space to play in. And um, I love being in this space, I'm learning every day. The silver wood's something I'm gonna always look out for because I've never bought one of these before, but it's now my biggest all time sale and I'm thrilled with it. And at the other end of the spectrum, I picked up this glass top coffee table for just $10 and it was in really poor dusty condition. And uh, after I put a bit of sugar soap and gumption into it, it actually presented really well in photos. And I wasn't sure what to list this one at. And I, in the end, I went 65. I've definitely gone unders on this one, guys. It, I actually also took an offer for $50 uh, on a next day sale. So sold for 50, I've made a $40 profit, but I really sat back on this one after I've done all the work in cleaning it up, the glass was fine. There was a bit of water damage. There was a leg that needed tightening, but I did manage to tighten it. So I, I, in the end, this was actually a good piece of furniture and I went too low on it. I really do think that when you're buying those free items that are furniture pieces, and if they are in great condition, you can still go on to sell them for that normal $100, $150 price point. Um, so I've learned a little lesson here. I've taken unders on this one, but I've still pocketed 40 bucks pretty quick, but I probably could have listed it for about 95. It was a really nice item and it did go really quick. The buyer was very happy, even with those little marks uh, on it and, and the water damage. Um, it was still a good piece. So I've learned a lesson, but happy to take the profit. 
Here's a little uh, left of field item, I guess. I don't think this is too much of a common flip top item, but it was these trestle tables. Um, I bought three of them for 60 bucks a, a couple of months ago for this business of, of reselling. I thought I'd need a few more than I actually needed, and I had two of them just lying around the house. I know that these things sell in Bunnings for $60 each. Um, so there was about $120 worth of value in these trestle tables. And I think coming into the Christmas period, uh, there's gonna be a lot of people that need additional seating and, and tables for the, for the festive season. So I thought, why not just whack them on and get my profit now. It's probably a great time to be doing so. I also think these items are a really easy grab for a very cheap price on Facebook Marketplace. I think you could find these for free for 10, for $20. Um, and I, I think you should be buying them if you can. They're probably a very easy item to store once they're laid up against the wall. You could put them in the garage pretty easily. Um, but these did go on to sell for 80 bucks in a pretty quick space of time. It was uh, next day sale. Um, so I doubled my money in effect. I bought them initially for 20 each. So I spent 40 and I've sold them for 80. Um, but I do think these ones are ones that you could find pretty regularly on marketplace for a cheap price and make that good profit by selling them for $40 each um, because they do go for 60 in Bunnings. All right, let's get away from furniture for a second. They were pretty much my three furniture items for the week, but there were a few other things. So uh, item number four I've got is this Boardwalk Empire uh, DVD full complete series collection. So this was a cool find in the op shop. This was on my uh, really kind of discount day trip to the thrift. I bought every item that day for $3.85 and this item was a part of it. Uh, so $3.85 in and uh, the comps were about $109.95. Uh, for a brand new one on eBay. So I think I initially went 99.99 and uh, this one set up, it ended up selling for in 44 days. And I think after about 30 days, I dropped it by 10 bucks down to 89.99. And that's exactly what it sold for. So a really great result of a $3.85 initial purchase. The fees was $11.69 and the profit in the end of the day here was $74.00 and 45 cents. So 44 day sales cycle, I was happy to wait because I knew that that's what it was worth. And there was enough volume of views and enough volume of watches that told me that this would sell eventually. Um, it, it, look, the box sets, the DVD box sets, uh, I know resellers out there that do uh, a lot of it, um, make good money from it. So if you are a new reseller looking to pick an item to get into, try to find the DVD box sets because they can go on to make some really good money. And uh, this one, the uh, Boardwalk Empire is a pretty good example of that. Here's a Bolo brand to keep your eyes out for if you aren't already. It was the G-Star cargo shorts. Um, now these G-Star brand, um, very hard to get your hands on nowadays. And whenever you do find them in the op shops, do pick them up because people are looking for them on eBay. And these sold within the space of just two days. Now I bought them in the op shop for $6.80. I think when you averaged out everything that I bought, it worked out to be a $6.80 spend on, on this particular item. Um, and it sold for $42.70. Now I built in a $7.70 price because I wanted to get 35 for them. And uh, I did end up getting the full price of $42.70. So uh, that meant at the fees of $5, I profited $29.45. And I wanted to get about 30 bucks for these uh, because I do know that the brand does go on to sell pretty well and pretty quickly. And a two day sales cycle is proof of that. So anything in the G-Star range, do buy it because it sells really well and it sells for a pretty high profit as well. So I was really happy to find it and I was really happy to get it done within the space of two days. Don't disregard the VHS tape series either, guys. I managed to pick up Die Hard 1 and 2 as a VHS tape off a garage sale. And in the end, I think this one worked out to a $3.50 purchase. Uh, don't disregard them because they do go on to sell on eBay really, really well. I put this one up for $24.95, free postage. That's exactly what it sold for. And uh, when you take out the fees and the post, I've ended up profiting just $10.50, which you might think is quite small and insignificant. But if you can be buying VHS tapes in bulk and you can find garage sales that have three, four, five, six, seven of them, um, definitely grab them because they all add up. If you did five of these, you'd make $50 profit. So I always look out for them. I also look out for DVDs and CDs and some of them do go on to sell pretty well. I actually thought for Die Hard, I just bought Die Hard, not because of the comps or anything. I just thought, you know, that sort of a movie would go on to sell well in the VHS series. So um, kind of happy with it. Uh, look, I, I thought I'd put it in there just to show that they are still selling on eBay and people are still buying them and they, they are getting views. Um, so a $10 profit, a 17 day sales cycle. It didn't even sit up for that long. It sold pretty quickly. And uh, I, I do keep an eye out for them and I, I think you should too. Next one up are these Nike footy boots that I picked up off a Facebook Marketplace bulk uh, sneaker purchase. Now these, were, there were 15 shoes that I bought in this deal. They were $15 each. These were one of them. These were never worn and they retail for $320. So I was really trying to make sure I held out the top dollar on these ones. 
I thought I'd test the market at 200 on eBay. Didn't get any real nibbles. A few watches, a few views, but no sort of inquiry. Uh, and then I kept slowly dropping the price. They were up for 48 days. I just couldn't get them done. But for $320 shoes, I think what shot me in the foot on these ones were they were a size, I think either a five or a six. Um, and that just didn't help my cause. So it, it, the shoe sizes at that lower level of five and six, they, they typically don't sell as well for me. And sometimes I just pass on them as well because they are too low. Um, but in the end, I got $135 for them. Uh, I can't be disappointed with that buying them for 15, but I was really hoping to get over 150. When you take all the fees out, I've made $94.75, but uh, actually, you know, I, I can't be disappointed. It's still a pretty good result. One thing that I really love to do when I'm in the op shops is to sort through and find the basketball jerseys or the soccer jerseys or pretty much any sporting jersey out there because there are super fans of them out there. Not even super fans, just people that love the team and love to wear the jerseys casually. There's a real market for it and I always buy them because they generally in the op shops are worth about $3 to $5. Now, I bought this New York Knicks jersey for $3. It was a Jason Kidd number five, I think. Um, and this one was a really cool buy because it was so low and I knew that I was going to get some pretty good money for it. It did say Mitchell & Ness, which is a very quality, genuine brand, but this was not Mitchell & Ness. This was a fake. And I made sure that when I advertised it, that I said that it was not genuine. And uh, it did hold around for a little bit, 53 days, certainly a whole lot longer than what I thought this one would hang around for. Jerseys don't normally hold for 53 days. I normally get rid of them a lot quicker, uh, but this one did take a little bit longer. But $30 is what it sold for. And I made a $27 profit because this was off Facebook Marketplace. And when you sell on Facebook Marketplace, you don't pay any fees. I love Facebook Marketplace. I'll continue to sell on Facebook Marketplace because of results like this. $27 profit, three into 30. You gotta love that. Football jerseys, they go really well for me. And basketball jerseys, anything NBA sells very, very well. Managed to also sell these Nike Roshis black and white polka dots. Um, these came out of the 15 shoe haul for $15 um, and I sold them for $45 on eBay. Now, take out the fees, I've only made $16.45 on this shoe, but when you look at the whole uh, bulk purchase collectively, I've made $250 profit now and I've still got seven shoes to sell out of that haul. So it's been a really great buy this one. Happy to get rid of another one here with these black and white Roshi polka dots. They were in great condition, no holes whatsoever. So happy to get the result there with the, the $16 profit. But I will say that Facebook Marketplace is probably a better spot to sell shoes in my opinion. I'm getting some good money on eBay, they are selling, but the fees are sort of cutting me down a little bit. So I'm finding that they are generally selling around the same price on Facebook. Facebook Marketplace for me personally. I think clothing is something that I'll continue to put onto eBay only, but the shoes, I'm really finding a bit of luck when I put them onto Facebook Marketplace. So these ones were an eBay sale item and I did get the 16.45 over a 50% profit margin, so I'm not disappointed. But I think from now on, I'm gonna try and angle my shoe selling to Facebook Marketplace a little bit more so. A bit like the VHS tapes that I was talking about earlier, CDs are a space that I also spend quite a bit of time in. And I managed to find this Led Zeppelin CD. Um, this one was, I think a two CD pack, potentially a two CD pack. Um, and it was going, I bought it at a garage sale for just a dollar and it ended up selling on, on eBay for $24.99. So when you take out postage, $2.80, the fees were $3.24. I've made $17.95 off a CD, just one CD. And uh, it had a 30 day sales cycle, so not too bad. Uh, but I bought a stack of these CDs at a garage sale for a dollar each. And that's generally what you pick CDs up for. It's good to pay your attention uh, on, on this sort of an area when you're in the op shops as well. I think if you do spend the time, you can find the profit. Uh, it's just a matter of sifting through and, and doing your comps, unfortunately, like anything. But to, to sort of see Led Zeppelin, I, I thought of, just thought Led Zeppelin would sell well, so I grabbed it for a dollar because it was such a cheap price. And then the comps told me that it was worth about 25. So 30 day sales cycle, 18 bucks profit. Keep an eye out for your CDs. So there you go guys, my 10 best sales of the week. Hope you enjoyed those. Let me know in the comments below what was your best sales item. I love to hear what your best sales item of the week was because I go out and I try to look for that item too. Works both ways. Let me know in the comments below your best sale of the week. As always, I love to jump into the sales numbers as well and show you what I'm doing on a weekly basis to keep myself accountable and also be transparent to you guys as well to let you know how I'm going with this whole process of trying to make it as a full-time reseller. So let's pull up the grid. I'll show you my numbers now. I managed to sell 35 items this week, which is above average. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know that I do at least 20 to mm, 25 to 30 is probably average. Cost of goods this week was only 272.38. That's a little bit less than normal, but my sales were certainly above average. I got 1,652 in the bank uh, this week. 
So that left me with a profit of $1,379. Now that's a bump a week for me. I normally try to like to hit the $1,000 profit. Um, so I'm only helping myself out for the month of December by doing this in one week, $1,379. 83% uh, profit margin is what got me that $1,379. I, I think that obviously the $650 sale for that Silverwood piece has helped my cause this uh, week, but uh, to get $13.79, very, very happy with that. I'll take my taxes out of that and uh, move on to next week. But um, this week, I think obviously leading into the Christmas time, you're gonna make a few more sales uh, this week leading in. I think next week will be interesting because it's gonna be tougher with the postage uh, to make it in time for Christmas. So does that see the sales drop? I'm not too sure. I'm also thinking about going on a Facebook Marketplace a little bit more. I'm certainly putting my time into eBay at the moment. Um, I have done since pretty much the start of November, but um, I'm sort of using Facebook as a, a second cross-listing point. I think next week I'm gonna make it my predominant listing point and then list secondly into eBay, if that makes sense. Um, more so for the fact that leading into Christmas, people are gonna to need to buy items and get their hands on it really quickly. And I think that's where Facebook Marketplace could be my best friend. So it's only my thoughts for the next two weeks before Christmas. Um, I'm still gonna keep uh, buying as many items as I possibly can. Sourcing so far this week, I'm up to about 130 items sourced. Um, and, I, and I think that's pretty good because it's only the 13th. So I'm on track to do about 300, which would be a record, buying 300 items in one month. So pretty happy with the way I'm sourcing, happy with the way that I'm selling, keeping an eye always out for furniture. I'm gonna do a furniture series as well on YouTube. There's gonna be a new episode series that I'm gonna be bringing out, which is gonna be basically me just vlogging my experience of flipping furniture. Um, I'll show you what I do on a weekly basis in my sales for furniture, but I don't really tell you the weekly ins and outs of how I'm going about it. And I think you guys are interested in learning more about that side of things. So. I'm gonna try and work out how to make uh, an entertaining sort of furniture talk type series, but I'm gonna bring that to you hopefully and potentially next week, we'll see. I won't um, sort of hold myself accountable to any timeline, but I'm gonna work on that for you as well. So that's everything guys, a good week of sales, 13.79 in the bank, um, 35 sale items, which is pretty cool too. Hope you're having an awesome week. Hope you're leading into the Christmas time yourself with a few sales. Um, it's a great time of year to be a reseller and I'm really enjoying the process four months into it. So I'll leave the episode there. Thanks very much, any questions, it in the comments give me a like if you're still here and you haven't done so yet but uh, until the next video we'll see you then